Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you are having a good new year so far. Things are a little rough in our household because both Ryan and Carter have come down with the flu or more accurately, I should say, Ryan has something called the man flu, which is like the regular flu, just a bit more dramatic. I'm freezing cold. Oh my gosh, I'm so cold. <laughs> Why is it so cold in here? I'm too hot now. Oh, I'm so hot. Oh, I feel like I'm in a volcano. It's an inferno. It's a volcano inside of an inferno. I hope all you out there watching are feeling good and healthy because this is the best time of the year, in my opinion, to reevaluate how you are planning and scheduling your life and make some changes if necessary. So I'm gonna share with you guys today a method that I recently came across, I have been testing out, and it is amazing. It has totally transformed my life and my productivity. It's called the Block Scheduling System. And this method was created by a woman named Jordan Page. She is a YouTuber, she's a mom of six kids, has multiple businesses, and really seems like she has her act together. So I'm going to link to her website and her video down below if you want more information. I'm going to be giving you guys an overview of the method, my experience using it, and also some modifications that I've made that I feel for me has made it even more effective. I have so many videos coming up on the topic of productivity, organization, cleaning, all all that kind of stuff so make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss that and with all that said let's jump in to the block scheduling method so most of us out there myself included schedule their life either task by task or hour by hour and the block scheduling method as the name implies has you scheduling out your days block by block so these are time blocks that are between two to four hours long where you set up different task buckets things that you do during those time blocks and an analogy that she used that i think is really effective in kind of understanding this is think about back when you were in school and you were in your classes when you were in any particular class you're focused on that subject and when the bell rings you pack up your stuff and you move on to the next class. So we're going to apply that same method to scheduling our days. And I'm going to show you in particular what my block schedule looks like right now. So it's gonna make a lot more sense when you see it in practice. But I do just wanna say overall, the main benefit I found from this method is I feel like my days now have a lot more structure. It is so much easier to plan my days because I know where each task goes and I know that they're going to get done. So the time blocks that she recommends setting out are between two to four hours long because any shorter than that, you're gonna fall back into the same trap of going to an hour by hour daily schedule and that defeats the whole purpose. So my first time block is from 7 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. and that is what I call my morning block. So this is the time where I make breakfast for both myself and for Carter. This is also the time where I will get myself ready and I'll get Carter ready. And this is the time where I will do a learning activity with Carter in the morning for about 15 to 20 minutes. The next block from 9.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. is what I call my outing block. So this is where I would schedule anything during the day that I need to do outside of the house. So for example, play dates or activities with Carter. I do try to get him out of the house almost every day if I can. So this is the time we will do that. This is also the time if I have to run errands or go to the grocery store, if I have any appointments that I need to schedule, like a doctor's appointment or a hair appointment, I would also do it during this time and arrange for my mom to come over and watch Carter. And the last thing in this time block is I will prepare and eat lunch for both Carter and myself. Time block number three from one to 3 p.m. is the nap block. This is the time where Carter is napping so I can get some things done. The first thing I do in this time block is I speed clean for about 15 to 20 minutes. So I will clean up all of the mess that has taken place during the mornings. And after that, I will film. So for example, right now it is two o'clock on a Friday. So I am filming, it is quiet in the house, very, very rare around here. So I found this is my best time for filming. On days where I don't have to film, I will take the remainder of his nap time to just rest decompress, go on social media, and relax until he wakes up again. Next time block from 3 to 6 p.m. is my work block. I now have a babysitter that comes to the house Monday through Friday from 3 to 6 p.m. so that I can sit in my office and have a concentrated time where I can get all of my work done. So usually this will be editing videos, planning 
for videos, answering my emails, and also working on a secret project that I've been working on for over a year now. So setting up this time block has been the most life-changing for me because otherwise I was working very late into the night and now I have a carved out set aside time during my weeks where I'm getting all of my work done. Next time block from 6 to 8.30 p.m. is the family time block. Definitely my favorite time block of the day. This is where we all get to spend time together as a family. We will hang out, we'll play, we will make dinner and eat dinner together. Also in this time block, I have set aside a couple time for Ryan and I, and that's really just focused time where we can get to hang out and talk because sometimes having a kid that falls by the wayside and I think it is really important to have that set in. Next time block from 8.30 to 11 p.m. is my me time. Ryan goes to bed on the early side at 8.30 because he also wakes up really early. So this is a time in the evening where I can just relax, watch TV, read a book. There are some nights where I do have to continue working a little bit in this time block, but I try really hard to avoid doing that so I can have some dedicated time just for myself. I will shower and get ready for bed, and I'm now getting into bed at 10.30 p.m. This time was creeping later and later and later. Now I'm committed to getting into bed by 10.30 with the goal of being asleep by 11 p.m. And that is my last time block of the day, which is the sleep block from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. So I have carved out in my schedule to now start getting eight hours of sleep a night. I have been able to do this just for the past few nights. I'm finally falling asleep on time and it has been amazing. So that is the overall framework. I made for myself a little key where I have all of my time blocks, the name, and then the tasks that happen in those time blocks. This alone for many people is going to be enough. You can kind of just plan your days using this, but if you want to take it one step further, what I've also done is I've coordinated this block schedule system with my Google Keep. That is a to-do list app that I've been using for a couple years. I've talked about it many times on my channel. And what I've done is I've set up a series of to-do lists that coordinate with my time blocks. My work time block is colored purple. So I have a purple note set up in my app where I have all of my specific tasks that I need to do during that time block. So when I'm sitting down at 3 p.m., I will open up my app and I will just start going through the tasks that I have to do during my work time block. But if you prefer to do your detailed planning on paper, I also created this block schedule weekly planner where I have the days Monday through Friday, the times on the side, and then I have my blocks color coordinated out on here so that I can do my individual daily schedule if I have any appointments or things that I need to do on paper. I also put a little meal planner over here on the side where I can write down what I wanna have for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks that week and then just a general to-do list and a to-buy list. So I've been kind of using both, seeing what I like, but overall I am just loving this method so much. Now I'm gonna share with you some of the modifications that I've made that's made it work better for me. So in Jordan's method, she recommends having alarms in your phone set for all of your time blocks. And those alarms would go off 15 minutes before the time block is over, just to kind of give you a reminder it's time to wrap up. And then at the end of that time block to signify Bell's going off, you're switching to the next time block. Originally, I did have two different alarms set, but I found that it wasn't really necessary for me, and so now I just have one alarm set for the end of each of the time blocks, and I feel like in the future, I probably won't need to have any type of an alarm because it will just be so ingrained. Another thing that I've added to my block schedule is drinking water. So I've committed to drinking 12 ounces of water during each one of my time blocks, and I have it even set here. If you see, each of these time blocks has a little circle where I cross out as I'm drinking my water throughout the day. So I know when I wake up in the morning, I have until 9.30 to drink one of these. And then the next time block, I drink one of these. And this has been working so well. Another thing I've added to this is you can see here for each of these time blocks, I have written if they are plugged or unplugged. So for example, during my work time block, I have this as unplugged where I have my phone in another room. So it is not tempting me, I am not checking it, and I can really be focused on the work that I'm doing. But during my me time block, I am plugged in, I'm on my phone, I'm doing that. So I found that also adding this to the mix has been really helpful in me just being more focused. Another modification that I've made is that I find that in between time blocks, I give myself like a little five to 10 minute break just to refresh my mind. I think breaks are healthy, especially going between two intense time blocks. I just find it's really good for the mind to give yourself little breaks 
in between extended times of focus. So that is the overview of the block scheduling method along with my modifications that I made. Like I said, I absolutely love this method. I cannot recommend it enough. It's a pretty simple concept, but for me and my life, it just works so well. I find myself being really productive and motivated and just being clear on my days and what needs to get done when. So you guys should definitely try this out. So that's gonna be it for today's video. Let me know what you think of this method. If you have any questions or comments on it, leave it down below. Also, if you were looking for more inspiration for the new year and starting new habits, I did a video last week on my 10 habits that I am starting for 2019. Make sure you are following me on Instagram. I'm getting a lot more into posting photos and stories over there. So with all that said, thank you as always so much for watching and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye. I'm not gonna make you, babe. I'm done for. I'm a goner. There's no hope for me. Don't cry for me now. My ticket's already been booked. I'm on that final journey. Thank you for everything you've done. I think I'll miss you the most. What's my temperature? 99. I think I think you're good now, sweetheart. Oh, all right. Cool. I think football's on. Watch the football.